Okay, great. Okay, so Stefan, let's talk about um yeah, your your thing is playing defense against uh good receivers. Do you have a well actually why don't we start off? Just tell me a little bit more about that. What are you having trouble with? Yeah. So basically what happens is like so we are playing now in the first week in Germany. And so we um, went from the second to the first league uh, last year. So as after winning the second league last year. And now I have the problem that especially because to this weekend, so the next weekend we have the second week of tournaments. And basically I see like, because I'm quite fast, so I can run quite fast. And But it's still like if you have like a good receiver who is faking a lot, cutting a lot, it's still... Um, how to say it? it's still hard for me to follow him so it feels like okay I feel like I am faster than you but you still got the disc all the time mm. because you are cutting me I trap into your face and then I just basically can just watch those guys uh, getting the disc and so I was thinking about how to improve my positioning because of course you need to be free of the thought that you can defend everything because of course if the mark was not good then it's not your fault but especially those if it's like uh, not a break on the open side to really keep the positioning i'm still struggling so in the second or third league it was way easier <laughs> and now i can really see like if you play against yeah better receivers or good receivers that's what i put it like this then i can really see like mm, it's not that easy even thinking about the positioning using my speed i still feel like I could do a better defense, and I would okay. like to play defense because I love defense. But great. yeah, that's basically my problem. <laughs> oh, problem. Okay, great. So okay, yeah. So just to make sure I understand, so you you feel like you have you have a speed advantage on some of these folks, but you're still not able to play defense because you know apparently they probably have higher level skills since you just transitioned from second league to first league. So you're kind of running into a maybe a you know, you're playing against players with a higher game IQ. And so even if they're not mm -hmm. as fast, they're able to 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 beat you in these ways. Is that accurate, do you think? Yeah, I would say it's, it's fine. So I would okay. say like from the physical ability, I would say I'm not slow or something, but I can see yeah. that they uh, have a better body control. So they know okay. how to do the cuts so that mm -hmm. it's or how to move the body. So that's difficult for me to become between the receiver and the disc. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so the way I like to do this coaching is to see if we can think of a specific scenario, um, and then we kind of like slow it down, analyze it, and then see if we can, um, you know, learn from that, and then and then take it to like the larger theme. Are there any particular situations that you feel like you have a pattern of of getting beat in, or is there a specific situation that happened recently where you kind of got beat in a way that you didn't like and want to? Want to dissect it? That's still difficult to say, to be honest. It's more like it feels like okay. I try to get the oh, what to say it in English. Um, so I want to say under, so mm -hmm. that I don't want to. And then I get the deep shot. And mm -hmm. if I want to do the defend the deep, then they get all the time the short passes. And okay. if it's like I can switch it, but they can adjust, and then they always get the disc. And okay. because I know a good defense could be. If my opponent has never the disc and that in this point, then it was a good defense. But it's simply it's like uh, I say under, they go deep. I say deep, they go under. And if it's like whatever I do, it's not the uh -huh. best way okay. to get them there. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Well, let's see if we can think of um, a recent a recent um, point then. So what what I'm hearing is that you're feeling like when you take the away the unders, then they go deep. When you take away the deeps, then they go under. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're taking what you're giving them and they're doing it successfully. And you're not exactly. really, yeah. And so maybe, maybe I think you, you maybe know or have an idea in your head that if you could play better defense, you could take away one thing and at least make a challenge or make it difficult to do the other. Exactly. I want to increase the pressure basically because right. I don't okay. want them to make it like too easy. I exactly. mean, I, I do not make it too easy, but sometimes it feels like, ah, again and yeah. again, I know what he wants to do and he's still doing it. And it's like, I want okay. to increase the pressure to have a, like a yeah, better defense uh -huh. here. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's let's again go to, you know, maybe there's not a perfect example or a specific pattern, but let's just go to any any recent defensive point that you can remember, and let's see if we can dissect that. Does that sound good? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, okay. So tell me about a point that you remember 
uh, maybe just tell me the whole story first, like the, you know, just a, de a defensive play. Uh, and then I'll probably slow it down and ask you some dumb questions. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I'm just, I mean, today here in Germany, it's 11 o'clock in the, in the evening. So I mm -hmm. just came back home from practice. Perfect. And uh, there I had a situation because we also have some good receivers in our team where I was uh, defending my mate. And basically, I would, he was, so let me think about it, some situation. So basically, they were playing something like a 4 3, so they had like a horizontal stack. Okay. And I was, uh, I was defending uh, not the players in the handling, so I was play, defending one of the horizontal guys, but he was basically not in the middle, so he was doing the shortcut or the deep cut, so that was what he's doing. So I know like, okay, they're good handlers, so they they will do the deep shots. So I, I tried to stand behind him, so in okay. order to make sure that I will defend the deep shot because I know I will be faster than him. But at the same time, I don't want to give too much space so that I for sure can increase the pressure if he goes short. But basically mm -hmm. what happened was that he went short he got the disc, he played it back to the handler and they shot deep to someone else. And mm -hmm. for me, it was like, I just run behind him and I was basically just watching how he just assisted then the other guys to do the deep shot again. So I was so I was giving him the shot and he took it <laughs> and they were successful. So that was maybe the situation here. And yeah, especially the horizontal stack, um, for me, it's sometimes difficult because if you have like the vertical stack, then I can discuss with my mates, like, okay, you take the under, I take the deep one, or we switch. But especially on the horizontal stack, if there's only three, if it goes short, okay. then uh, it's very hard for me to still be in sure. between there. Okay, great. So, um, okay, so we're going to analyze this from a few, I'm going to ask some dumb questions. We're going to kind of talk about this and see what we can what we can learn. So my understanding is, so you're guiding someone on the outside of the horizontal stack, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And you basically were you were standing behind them pretty close. You didn't give them a lot of space. You're standing behind yep. them. You're basically forcing them under. And then they they cut under. They got the disc. They dished it back to a handler who threw it deep. Right. So far. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. okay. Great. Now, when you when you forced this person under, like how um, how far did they have to go? Like how much did they have to run in order to get the disc? Mm, I would say. 10, 15 meters. I don't okay, know how so, that's in yards. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Yards and meters are close enough. All right, so 10, 15 meters. And in that amount of time, that was, were you faster than this person or no? Or about equal? I think I think on 15 meters, I could be faster, but basically he had his body in between. So he faked, like he like jumped one into me. So he was just mm -hmm. trying to fake deep. And then he, so he had a good body language and then he went short. And then I was running behind, but then it was done already. So I could come closer, but I was not faster than him because with the cut, okay. so with, the, with the fake cut, I basically Got trapped it. into a situation. Okay, so okay, so so he basically took a step deep first that kind mm -hmm. of got you on your heels, and then for that reason, he was able to gain space as he went under. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, I would say if you think about it, I would say so. But sometimes also he even does not even go the deep steps. He just like moves the body, like just with the body language, upper body, and then he goes deep. And I always feel it's like I react, and then that one second I lose the um, yeah this uh, the opportunity to go between. Okay, so let me. So when you're positioned against this person, are you like directly behind him, like you're between him and the deep cutting lane, or you're beside this person? Can you repeat the last? Sorry. The way that you're positioned to start these these points, are you are you between the person and where they would want to cut if they were going deep, or are you standing kind of behind them but a little bit beside them? Uh, yeah, to be honest, I would say uh, behind, and maybe a bit of a side, not maybe. No, I would I won't say it's directly to stop the deep shot. I would say it's more like behind and beside. To make okay. sure if the deep shot comes, I can run. But here you are right; it's more like beside. Okay, yeah. So there's a couple. There, it could be a possible. Um, it could be possible to think about it slightly differently. Your positioning. Um, if you're, I mean, if you. So a person who's who's already going in a straight line, like they have the right to that straight line of travel, right? But if you're already mm -hmm. in that straight line, you don't have to get out of their way, and they don't have the right to run into you. That's true. So. <laughs> 
So, so it's something, some, the way that some players think about this is not just like covering the deep, but they think about it as forcing the person they're covering to go under. Like if you're saying to the, you're saying to your offensive person, I'm making you go under because you're not going to cut deep because I'm already in this lane. I'm already here. Right. Do you kind of, can you kind of visualize the difference? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So that would be just a, a possible thing to try to, to maybe alter your positioning a bit. Cause if you're off to the side, you're basically giving them either lane, they can go in or deep, they get to the side and then, and then you just have to react, which is kind of what you're doing. So even if they fake a little bit, you kind of have to react because if they keep going, then, you know, they're yeah, that is deep, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Right. Yeah. So, so it's like, so it's no wonder you're reacting, right? That makes mm -hmm. sense. But if you're, yeah, if you're yeah. behind, yeah. But if you're directly behind, uh, they basically have the choice to, they can still fake towards you. You can back up a step if you want or not, <laughs> right? If, they, if they're serious about going deep, they have to do, they have to do something else that takes mm -hmm. more time for them. Um, it's going to take a different skill to like, you know, they still might go deep. They still might go around. You might take a different skill to like do the footwork to turn your hips when you have to and, and be ready to go deep. But um, it's also mm -hmm. a different, different cutting profile for them. Maybe one that's not so easy and therefore it's not so much of a threat. So you can kind of like um, uh, be a little bit more secure that they are actually going to go in. You don't have to bite mm -hmm. so hard on every fake because you're a little bit more in control of their path of travel with your positioning. Mm -hmm. But from the distance, would you say, like you said, like on the deep lane, like is it then directly behind or would you say, so because if I feel if I'm too close, then also it might be too easy. That's why maybe I would also say I have a, maybe a, a, a gap between me and the opponent. I'm just wondering like... Well, what are you trying to do? Pardon? Well, well tell me like in your, in what, it depends on what your objective is. Mm -hmm. So um or what your priority is right so in in general you're going to either have a like you mentioned you can't cover absolutely everything so usually there's a priority like you want one priority thing that you're definitely taking away and then if possible you're going to challenge the other thing so what, what what's your priority in this situation the priority was in this situation uh, not to get the deep shot because i know we have those handers there who would love mm -hmm. to do the deep shot so okay. i was like if i say under then they will shoot deep and then i can just watch so i was my priority was on uh, defending the deep shot okay but at yeah, the so same that... time yeah oh yeah right. well i think i think it can work either way like um and it also may depend on the on the cutter so um so what i would what i would recommend is right now it sounds like your positioning is more to the side so i would recommend maybe experimenting with the position more directly behind getting in the actual deep cutting lane and then as how much distance you need or want mm -hmm. that's up to you there's there's trade-offs or either right i don't think there's i don't think there's an exactly right answer here Mm -hmm. um, being closer is more about it, it. It is a little bit more of a psychological suggestion to the cutter that the obvious way to go is that way. So just go that way, right? You're you're kind <laughs> yeah. of di like dictating which way they go if you're close because they literally can't. They have to do something else before they go deep because you're right there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. one option. Now, if if you know, depending on the cutter, if they're really like have good quick footwork and quick jukes, they could maybe easily, you know, take a step forward and around you, depending like if you're really close in that case, yeah, you're going to need a little bit more space so that you can kind of stay with them and then be ready to turn your hips if you're sure they're actually going. Um, so, so yeah, the spacing you might play around with, but what, what I think maybe the first step is to like play around with the actual positioning, getting, getting more in the lane that they want to be in and thinking about it as like, whatever you want to take away, you just want to be in a position where you can get there first. So you want to be able to get in the deep space that they would be wanting to go to mm -hmm. first. Right. And if you're beside them, that's a little bit more challenging or like, yeah. 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 Sounds, sounds makes sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then as far as like, so the other thing about the spacing is, is a little bit about your second obje objective. If your objective is to, if your objective is to challenge the under and like, force the under what some players will do will will be stand more directly behind the person cutting and basically again you're suggesting to them hey go ahead and go under and then you know i'm really fast and what's going to happen if you do that is that i'm just going to commit to going full speed and maybe get a run through or, or layout deep. Mm -hmm. like that would be yeah, sort of the I won't throw the disc because he sees the oh there's a defender right also right that. so that yeah so that might be a way of, of doing more pressure but again it depends on the the cutter and whether they can get around you 
quickly. Mm-hmm. But I would I would try that because that's I'm guessing it's um it might at least be a different feel for the person who's cutting than what they're used to. Mm-hmm. Um and so it might produce different or interesting results. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Sound good? Yeah, sounds really good. Yeah, I think because as I said, so this weekend we have the yeah, our basically the the last five games because in Germany I, I don't know how it's uh, organized in the uh, in the states, but in Germany we basically have like two weekends and now we have the next five games. So we have the first okay. five games already. So basically, this uh, coming upcoming weekend, we will see if we can stay in the first league or if we go back to the second league. So that's where <laughs> I thought I got. So well, not bad to get some. Uh, yeah, impression on yeah how to defend as also like an additional way to prepare myself for that weekend. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and you'll have the opportunity to get get a lot of reps and and try try out some different positioning. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording here. This snippet might be useful for others, hopefully. So. Um,